This is your video explanation for your All About You visual journal. So what are you going to be doing? This is going to be your first project. With this project, you're going to be creating a visual journal page that is all about you. It will be up to you how you represent yourself on a page. You're going to learn how to create a visual journal using multiple art supplies, supplies and have the opportunity to experiment with art materials freely. And you're also just going to get the chance to express yourself in a very free method. Um, at the end of this project, we're going to be completing a small version of a critique. This will probably be when I get back, just to introduce you to talking about your artwork and presenting it. So what is a visual journal? A visual journal is a way of expressing your thoughts or feelings or important information by using text and images. It can be communicated through the use of doodles, sketches with words or thoughts. It's a new form of self-expression. So here is an example of visual journal. This is like someone who would do like a more personal journal. So this is, was their journal for October. So they have like little ghosts, they have uh, pictures of things, they have words, they have things overlapped and it's all very visual, but words are also included. There are a few different types of visual journaling. So the first one, which really is everything is mixed media. So mixed media is when you use more than one art material layered on top of one another. So this is like, they put down um, like paper bags and then they layered paint and Sharpie on top of that. They used multiple things. So they used collage painting and Sharpies. It's using different art supplies on the same surface and layering them on top of one another. Another one, which is kind of similar to that, is post-it note alteration. So you can stick post-it notes down on your page and you can use this to create an effect um, where something is different on the post-it note than it is on the background, or it can just change the tone or color of your paper. You can do collage with basically anything. So if you'd like to incorporate nature, so if you really like pressed flowers, you can include pressed flowers in your composition. If you have found objects you'd like to include, like you can use things like gum wrappers or random stickers you've been collecting or anything really, you can collage with them. Another thing is paper collage. Um, a lot of uh, visual journaling is including a lot of layers. So paper is a good method of just creating a solid background that you can layer on top of. So you can use, I have color paper for you to use. You can use fabric collage. I have old books you can rip up. I have old magazines you can search through um, just to create a foundational layer, something that you can build off of a layer later. Um, this one creates a really unique effect and really goes with the visual journaling aspect because it includes words too. So those are the different types of visual journaling. Now we're going to talk about craftsmanship and proper art making. So craftsmanship is a big thing that's going to be taught in this class. It's how neat a project is completed and I'm going to talk about craftsmanship a lot through the entire course. So this is something that's good to know. I want to be seeing good or excellent craftsmanship. So that is represented by this tattoo of a lion that actually looks like a lion. So it's when you make an effort. It means filling the page completely with purposeful elements, not just rushing through something, no scribbling and taking your time. Um, this is what I want you to strive for in this class. What I don't want is poor craftsmanship. So you probably wouldn't want this tattoo on your arm. So Poor craftsmanship is when you're rushing through it, it's very scribbled, you leave a lot of space empty, and then it's poor attention to detail. I want you to have as much attention to detail and take your time. So this is another thing that shows craftsmanship. Um, what I don't want are these level ones. So when it is at a level one, you show minimal effort, there's no attention to detail, and it just looks sloppy. Number two is when you put in a little bit of effort, there's an attempt, but there's a need for improvement. There are still some areas that are left unfinished, spacey or sloppy. Um, shows a little bit more effort than level one, but not much. Level three um, is there's a little bit more effort in there. There's clear effort, but there's still some areas that could need improvement. So you might've rushed through one portion of it. There's some like bleeding of um, the markers or paints or anything like that, or there's just some sloppy shading, but it's very minimal in number three. And number four is what we strive for. So that is the top level. It demonstrates proper craftsmanship. Everything is neatly filled in. They took their time and it's very detailed.
Now about your assignment. So there are requirements for your visual journal. I'm not gonna give you complete and total free reign. Um, the requirements are you must use at least three different art materials. You must have your name on the page. It is a journal about you, include your name. It must be filled with images, words, lines, collage, et cetera, et cetera. All of these must relate to you. This is a page about you. The page must include at least five different illustrations, and that would be including five different elements. So if you like flowers, you can draw flowers. That would count as one. If you want to draw your dog, that would count as one. Um, that would be five total. You need five illustrations. The elements of your page must vary in size, shape, and positioning. So that is more of like an artistic thing. You don't want everything to be the same size repeated over and over and over. The composition, so your um, drawing will look much better if there's a variety of different sizes, if things are overlapping, and if they're angled differently. The page must be a direct representation of you, not about someone else, all about you. You must be able to describe each element on the page and how it relates to your personality. You must include written words. Um, it must be neat. It must demonstrate unity and balance, which are two things we're going to talk about next. So what is unity? Unity is about separate parts working together in a composition. In an artwork, it creates a sense of harmony and wholeness by using similar elements and placing them in a, in a way that creates a feeling of oneness. So this work of art shows unity because it's all the similar style. We have a constant background color. Every shadow is going the exact same way. The ice creams are all similar shaped, even though they aren't all perfectly replicating one another. And it just looks consistent. This would not show unity if, for say, like this ice cream cone was upside down and very large and melting and just like neon red. That would look very different than all of the other ones. Just a unity in a whole is just all of everything has the same vibe. Nothing stands out and makes it appear awkward. So visual weight goes along with balance. Um, the more objects that are on the page, the heavier it will be. So that would mean like, for example, here we have a circle that's an object. We have these lines over here. They create that appear appearance of visual weight. It's something that takes up space on the page. You want your things to feel balanced. If there are more objects on one side than the other, it feels like it's tilting. So if the um, this circle up here and all of these lines take up more space than these two things over here, making it feel unbalanced, making it feel like the composition is leaning towards one way. You wanna make sure that it is balanced whenever you're working on a, uh, artwork. So if you have one thing on one side, have something of a similar size on the other. So balance. Balance refers to the use of artistic element as line, texture, color, and form, which you're going to be learning about later uh, in a way that creates visual stability. So you don't want it to be off-centered. You don't want it to be off balance. You want it to be stable through that work of visual weight, which we just talked about. Another thing that'll be important with visual journal journaling is layering. So creating layers helps create the appearance of fullness on a page and it helps things feel complete. So you can achieve this by layering collage objects over one another. You can draw objects in front of one another. They are physically layered. They create a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. For example, on this artwork, the background has cardboard, but it's not just cardboard. They took away sections of it so they could see that inner markings of it. Then they collaged on top of it so there's pictures of books. Then they painted on top of that too. Then they splatter painted. Then they actually painted. So there are many different layers that help it feel whole and complete. When you're going to be working on your visual journal, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to think and you're going to brainstorm. So I want you to think of imagery that you're going to include in your journal. You can start off with a list and narrow it down. The next thing that could help is if you think of a color palette or scheme that represents you. So do you like things that are bright and neon or do you like more pastels or do you like neutral colors? That would be a color scheme or a palette that represents you. Then you're going to think about layering. So what's something that can fill the page? Um, larger imagery, so something that will physically fill the page, or blocks of color, um, or you can start off with paint, or you can start off with collage, something that fills the background, and that's your first layer. And then what you're going to do is layer smaller elements on top of that. 
that's where you're going to start including your own visual elements. Make sure you include a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Here are some tips for visual journaling. Start big and work your way small. A blank page is very intimidating. If you have one large thing on there, it's going to be a lot less intimidating. You want to overlap, so overlap your small and large objects. Include a variety of colors. It's okay to make mistakes. You can always just layer on top of it, plain and simple. And then don't be scared to express yourself. This is a safe space to do so. This is going to be your time to experiment with different art materials, so take this to your advantage. Here is just a slide that shows different materials that you can use. So you can use books, you can use pencils, you can um, use colored pencils, paint markers, regular markers, gel pens, Sharpies, paint, glue, magazines, newspaper, scrapbook paper. There's a lot. Here are some examples of visual journals. So these are um, from the class. So they have um, this shoe was cut out and then there's marker layered on top of that. And then there's more like a graffiti effect layered on top of that. And then with this one, they did a good job layering too. So they have a nice background filler, which is the black and gray drips. They have their name um, through the page and also graffiti sense, but everything is layered and it fills the page well. These also show that same effect of layering and filling the page. These are all in the PowerPoint if you want to go and look at it later. But they're just a good example of how you can combine visual elements with written elements too. So now you can start on your planning portion. You can look all the way back to this, wait, this, this slide, um, where you can start to think of your imagery and then color palette, and then you can get started on your visual journal. Have fun.